So ez a fiók, amit az előbb láttunk ott bent. Ah, oh, I forgot, we have to speak English. But I speak very good Hungarian and a little bit of an English. So you forgive me for my English accent, but I try my best. This is the drawer from the showroom in the Queen Anne Lowboy. And I mill these pieces so you can see how this is going to relate to the drawer. We have the two sides with the groove plowed in it. And then we're going to have the draw face. And the back is cut shorter because the draw bottom is going to slide in from the back. Before I work on this real drawer, I want to talk to you a little more about top tailing. If you look at this drawer, it's pretty much the same as that, except has no lip, no lip. But a typical drawer has open dovetails in the back and half lap in the front. The pins are the straight ones and the tails going into them. So if you want to make dovetails, we have to understand we're going to put this wood into that, that wood into that. Therefore, if you want to make a box 10 inch by 10 inch, you need four pieces of wood 10 inch long because they are going into each other. To mark this thickness of the wood to the face of the wood, we use a marking gauge. We set up the marking gauge exactly to the thickness of the wood and then we mark it. We mark the face and the back on both pieces. And then the half pin what you're going to cut off, you mark the end of it. I cut the pins first. I cut a half pin, another half pin, a full tail, Divide this in thirds. And cut more pins. And then I have this dovetail cut out saw. Which cuts out the tails. So these are my pins. And from the pins, I mark the tails. Put it on there and mark it. The gravity is working with you. That's why I say it's easier to make the pins and then the tails, because it's much easier to mark it. This is the first time I'm using a pencil. And simply now cut these out. Simply pay attention to the pencil lines and leave the pencil line on there. On the tail side, you leave the line on. You can see the pencil line left on the tails. I cut on the waist side. If it's too tight, don't force it, just get a bigger hammer. And this is my quick dovetails. Next thing I want to show you how to lay out a simple half lap dovetail like this one. The piece not coming through the front, therefore, is half lap. First thing we got to mark is how deep 
the tail is going to go into the face. And we do that again with the marking gauge. Set it approximately, we leave about 3 16th in the face. It has to be more than an eighth because if you do it less than that, it's very hard to chisel. It's going to break out easily. Depends on the thickness of the wood, but I just sort of approximately leave on there 3 eighths of an inch. This is how deep we're going to cut. The same setting also has to be marked on the side of your drawer because this is how deep your tail is going to be. And you also mark the ends because this is going to be cut off, the half pin. So you mark both ends. You've got to do one more marking and that is the thickness of the draw side which again you set up the marking gauge for the thickness of the wood and then, then you mark it. That's all the marking you need to do. Now your sawing is limited. You have to cut between these two lines. The reason I'm setting this high because I have to cut on an angle. But I do the same thing as before. Cut a half pin. Another half pin. Cut a full tail. Divide this distance approximately in half. And the word is proximate because we are making a template. And a uh, little this way or that way doesn't really matter. Just divide it very tastefully. So this thing's going to be chiseled out. And this we have to chisel with the chisel. Once we chisel them out, simply we mark from the tails just like before and then we can do the things. If you do the same thing in pine, in pine, let's put on here quick line just like that. This is going to be the depth and this is how deep you want to cut. You do the same thing, cut first with a saw, half pin, other half pin, a big tail, divide this at once and twice. and cut more pins. Because our cutting is limited, many times what we do is a straight cardboard cabinet maker scraper, just the, the scraper you hammer in there. That completes your cut. And once you're done with that, you just chisel out the waste. We played enough. Let's get to the real thing and make a drawer for the Queen Anne low boy. I milled the pieces. This is going to be the face, the back, and the two sides. Uh, what I'm doing is put a little scribble on the outside. This is going to be the top and the front of the two drawer, I put a scribble on here. This is going to be the top on the outside. Next marking we got to do with a marking gauge. The back of the drawer is an open dovetail. So we mark this with a marking gauge. Again, set up the marking gauge exactly to the thickness of the wood. And mark it. Mark the face and the back. The marking gauge makes a very nice knife mark because my finishing nail in there is sharpened like this dowel. It's feathered and rounded so when I am marking with it, it's, it's cut a knife mark. Furthermore, it is set up, set up into the, into the beam a little bit this way. Therefore, when I pull it, it's going to go in. It can go in because the fence is holding it. Therefore, it's very easy to mark with it. So we mark this in the back, both sides. And 
and we mark the top because we know this is going to be cut up. These are the half pins. To mark the face, to mark the face, what I got to do is put this wood thickness on there, hold it like that, nice and flush on the outside, put a dot on the inside, pencil line, using a little scrap wood, which fills up the rabbit here. Now I can set up this marking gauge exactly to that line. We have to considering the rabbit here. Once I set this up, I simply mark it on both sides. We have to do one more marking, and that is how long the tail is going to be. And that's simply set up the marking gauge to this depth. My tail is going to go as deep as the lip of the drawer. You can see all the way they're going to go. Therefore, we have to set up the marking gauge from the outside of the walnut to the rabbit. Hold the marking gauge there and then lock it. Double check it. That's exactly on. And then mark the front. What we're marking now is the length or the depth of the, of the tails. And then we mark the top and bottom because these will be cut off. The groove is plowed in these pieces already. Therefore, we know this is going to be the bottom of the drawer, and so is on the face. And what's interesting about it is the bottom has no lip around. It's shaped the same way in the front, but it is flush. And the other thing is the groove in the draw face is deeper than in the side. So when the bottom is pushed in, a lot of shrinkage can happen and we will not see daylight through the face and the walnut. When I start cutting these pins, we have to understand the tail have to cover up this groove. Therefore, the half pin has to start at this corner. And I cut this backwards because we are very limited. Therefore, it's easier to go down like that. So I simply, I simply cut my half pin starting right on this edge. And I have to be careful not to cut into my lip and stop at the marking gauge line. I cut a half pin, another half pin. Cut a full tail here, which is going to cover the groove, as I said before. Divide this in thirds, approximately. And cut more pins. When I was apprenticing, I did the pins and the tails the same size. In America, in the last 10 years or so, I started to make my, my pins a little smaller in the tails. I don't know why. I hope you forgive me, Grandpa. I changed your method a little bit. I think it looks better if you have the, if you have the pins a little smaller than the tails. However, I'm still not doing very small pins like the English method. What I do next, because I'm going to use the router, believe it or not, to help me chiseling. 
with a white pencil, I'm going to mark all my saw marks so I can see easier when I cut this freehand with the router. Do the same thing on the other side. Let's understand something. The I'm going to use a router as a helping tool to quicker the waste removal. This has to come out from here. And as long as I will clean up afterwards, I will leave no router marks on the piece. I always said if my grandfather would have a router, he would use it. So let's cut now the pins on the back of the drawer. And that is an open dovetail, therefore we cut it straight across. Half pin, other half pin, a full tail. Cut this in half and come back to cut more pins and tails. Half pin. So we have to chisel out these tails. And we have to chisel out the tails on the, on the walnut. I made a jig to chisel the walnut. But before I chisel, I use a beautiful microfence plunge router base. <laughs> I put my Bosch router on it, and I will use that to take out my waste. So I made this new jig because I have this beautiful uh, new plunge router base from, from microfence. The jig is very simply just a scrap plywood, and what it does is pinches my face in, in there so I can, I can route it. What it does is I put a block of wood on there for the right height, and once I clamp it, it holds it nice and tight. Put on my lights, and Turn it around and do the same thing on the other side. This beautiful router base sure makes your job easier, especially these little lights. Without these lights in a basement shop, you would have a hard time to do that. So what I did, what I did is remove my waste. I made sure I am a little bit short of the face. All these little shoulders I have to chisel and that. So what I'm going to do next is clean up this with the chisel. Therefore, you're not going to see any router marks. And I have to because I am not close enough to the, to the line I need to. So right now I can do any changes because this is only the pins. So again, we're making a template. Whatever I shape here, little this, way, little that, it doesn't matter. I can change angles. I can make the spins the same lines. And I take off the, from the face a little bit, right there, to have the right depth. So if anybody would look at this over once I'm done with it, they would swear that this is completely done by hand. You would not think, you would not think I used the router, but it's a Great helping tool, especially on this wild grain walnut I am using. I also make curly, curly maple low boys. 
is just as difficult to work with as this very wild green American black walnut. When you do the half pins, even now, you have to be careful not to push hard because they can split out. So take it off little by little, that changes I need. Now in the bottom corners to clean out, I use this quarter inch chisel. It's much faster this way than if you don't use the router, this takes, takes time to chisel out so much uh, walnut. So how much you fuss with that? You just clean out most of it. If you think about it, it's going to be completely covered with the tails. So this is a matter of, matter of, uh, of uh, finesse, how fussy you want to be, how much of a craftsmanship you want to put into that. But the idea is to not to see any rather marks and make these things nice and parallel. Little different sizes, it's almost must have. Handwork has character. Uh, for many, many years, I did restored antiques only, and I studied dovetails. And I kept looking at dovetails because in America, a lot of people measure dovetails and mark them. And uh, when I started working in America, I was questioning my methods. So I was disturbed and, and looked into it and how more people I asked to dovetail uh, from East Europe, from uh, different part of the world. I find somebody from Guatemala. Hector Ortiz is a cabinet maker. I went to his shop and I asked him to cut me some dovetails. It was very interesting because he didn't speak much English. I didn't speak much English. He said, you, 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 you cabinet maker, you dovetail. And I explained to him, I just want to know how he does it. So he grabbed some chisels, a piece of scrap wood, and he cut dovetails identical as my grandfather. So I was very pleased. You know, Guatemala is Central America, not just East Europe people cut dovetails that way. In Guatemala, people cutting dovetails my way. And it's a very simple method to learn. You just have to make up your mind to learn it. Once you start doing that, you can do the same there. That's all I'm gonna, that's all I'm gonna fuss with that. Do the same thing on the other side. I do, I do a lot of woodworking shows, and once I was going to the woodworking show, I thought, I have to dovetail for people. Why don't I take my Queen Anne Lowboy draw faces with me? Then I'm going to cut dovetails there. It's just as well people are going to see the real thing. But I had some real wild grain walnut, and I start chiseling, and when the grain is so wild, you go this way, you go that way. A couple of people came there and looked at me, as they walked away, these two friends, I heard one telling the other one, this guy don't know what the heck he's doing. Well, I thought I would like to see you chisel this very wild grain. <laughs> you approach it like the cat some hot milk. If you put hot milk for the cat, the poor cat gonna go around and don't know how to start licking it. Sometime you go this way, you go that way. You have to find the grain not to cut against it, but you have no choice. You gotta cut down here, and if you take very little slices, it's gonna work very well. That's all I'm gonna do with this. You can clean this a lot more or less. It's gonna be covered up by the tails. And the back piece, I'm gonna chisel on my adjuster bench. This hold down works very well. Use a block of wood not to mar up my piece, and just 
bracket. How can you clamp something easier than that? The reason for the different size chisels is you want to use the widest chisel is the easiest. Put the chisel into the marking gauge line and just tap it. And do the same thing from the other side. These are the pins. Look them over if there's anything need to be cleaned up a little bit. Go back to the bench and we mark from the pins, we're going to mark the tails. So we have the face, we have the back, we got to mark it. I'm looking at my, my scribbles. Make sure they're facing each other. That's my draw face. Therefore, I am putting this on. It's hard to mess it up. You have the grooves already plowed. Therefore, it it's, uh, would be very difficult to make a mistake. Simply line it up, and with a pencil line, you mark the corners. And then you flip it and do the other side. So what I do next is flip this whole thing around so it's easier that way. And then hold the scribble to the top, put it on there and mark it. Again, from here to there. So if you never did that before, what the heck are you looking at? It's very simple to understand. If this is here, this has to go. This has to go in there. Therefore, I have to remove those pieces. And we say cut on the waist side means this is where I am sawing. Therefore, turn this into sawdust. Make sure that tail will fit into there. So if you, if you never did that before, first time maybe it imitated a little bit, little bit difficult, but we have to understand Cut on the waist side means leave the pencil line on the tails. This is the tail, this is the pin, this is the half pin. Once you understand that, the rest of it is hands and eye coordination. Just simply clamp it into the bench and start cutting. Put my thumb there, put the saw on, start on a backstroke, stop at the marking gauge line. Of those half pins. We saw just a little bit too aggressive to do uh, cross, cross grain cutting, but I love it. It's a beautiful saw, cuts nice and fast. Now we're going to go to the Adjust the bench and chisel out these. Uh, same as chiseling the pins, put the chisel on the marking gauge line and just uh, chisel down. If I would work on four drawers, I would have pieces piled up here, sometimes as many as six pieces. And then you just do uh, the same work. <clears throat> what I mean by that handwork is production. Once you start tapping, you do all of it the same way. Keep going. Keep going before you change chisel. And do all of it before you, before you change position. Once you're done with once, do the next step. 
and do all the next step. Handwork is production, what to do first, what to do second. That's what makes something uh, 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 faster. That's it, we're done chiseling the drawer. Let's see how does it fit. You need a good hard block so you're not gonna chip out your corners and your hammer. There we have a drawer with a little glue, a little. That's the open dovetails and a half lap dovetails. What we do here is uh, cut a draw bottom to this width. Before we glue this together, we gotta clean up the inside. We gotta clean up the inside. We gotta take away all the machine marks. That's how I make a drawer. I hope you're gonna try it. I wish you lots of luck in your woodworking adventure.